All right, everyone, Cody here. So today we're gonna to be feeding the bees some sugar water. We got five gallon bucket right here with 25 pounds of sugar and the rest water. I'm gonna start feeding it to the bees. Now, I've actually already started feeding the bees some sugar because about between the middle of July and the end of August, there's really no flowers up here in the mountain. Uh, we got some rabbit bush that's coming up and some sunflowers but those don't start blooming until the beginning of September. And so to keep the bees' populations up, I need to start feeding them a little bit in the middle of the summer here. So right now I've got these little feeders. They take up a frame inside the hive. You can put about a gallon and a half of sugar in there. And this will last a hive like this. That's about a week's worth of food for them. I actually started feeding the hives earlier I uh, filled up a two gallon chicken waterer and the bees would drain that in about uh, two hours or so. See I put a bunch of marbles in so they wouldn't drown and the bees have actually been lifting the marbles out of the can. Two of those in a week was keeping all of the bees pretty well fed. But I had to go away for a little while, off to Alaska in fact, and well the bees ran out of sugar water. And then they were still in a frenzy and it looks like they actually cleaned out some of the smaller hives, the weaker colonies here. You see this? They completely cleaned out all of their honey supplies in this hive and then the bees that were here starved to death. You can see piles of bees down in there. So this hive's dead, which is really unfortunate because this is one of my best queens, but I did manage to save a daughter queen off of this hive so I'm not too terribly upset about it but it means that I'm definitely gonna have to start feeding the bees inside their hives so they don't do this again. I probably have to go scrape those combs out so the moths don't get it. Let's put this uh, feeder in here. See I've actually put a little bit of screen on the ends of the ladders. This keeps the bees from going down in there when the sugar water is low. See what they would normally do is they'd come out to the bottom and they wouldn't be able to figure out how to get back out. And so these things, sometimes I've had them half full of dead bees and that really hurts a hive. So put the screen on them, no more drowning bees. This is where all the honey from that hive went. These guys right here are packing it all away. You can see in here they're building some new comb. See these large cells? That means they're trying to store honey here. It looks like they filled this with honey. That's all right. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put that feeder in right over here. I think I'll put it where the sun shines. That way it'll actually protect the bees from the heat. And, uh, hopefully, by the beginning of September, I'll have lots of bees in here and they'll have their winter stores set up. Then I can stop feeding them, put on a super, and get some honey. You may notice that there's actually two boxes on most of these hives. I did record me putting these on, but I've somehow lost the footage, so I'll just tell you what I did here. I you know, put the box on, some empty frames, and then to get them to build up into these top boxes, I put one of the frames from down there up here and that way they can build out horizontally from it. Because bees they seem to like to grow either horizontally or straight down. So what I could have done is I could have put this box underneath of the first box but instead of doing that I just put one of the frames up here so they'll just build out from it like this. Yep. I'll take a couple of these frames out, put in a feeder. And uh, I guess I'll cut to the footage where I'm showing the queen in that other box. Let's have a look at this little beehive, shall we? Looks like they're crowding around the entrance. Must be because it's rather warm today. But that means there's bees there. Let's open them up and see if we have a laying queen. I think last I checked she had hatched. But uh, there were no eggs or anything yet. Okay, so they've removed the queen cell part. Guess I could just take that all the way out now. Nothing on that frame. Look in here closer. Mm 
no B on that one either. And I see some eggs, but I don't see the queen. Where is she? Maybe they're queenless and we got laying workers. Let me look around for her. Maybe she's on the side of the box. Okay, I can see her down in there. She's in the corner of this box here. Let's see if I can tell her to come up out of there. There she is. Well, her ovaries are developed. So she's a laying queen. But I think she just barely would have started laying. Oh, there you go. Now you got a good view of her. All right. All right, she went back in the box. Let's uh, close this up so she doesn't get scared and fly away. Yeah, but she's there. There's eggs. So I guess I'll keep her in this box until I can confirm that she's laying productive brood. At which point, maybe I'll put her in one of the full-sized hives to replace the queen. So we're here over at the long hive, as you can see. There's a leg missing over here. The cows were pushing up against it and they broke one of the legs off and the hive almost fell over. That's why I've got these boxes wedged underneath of it there to support the hive until I can get another leg cut and put another leg on here. But uh, these boxes seem to support it just fine. So I'm actually going to put so I'm actually going to put this uh, chicken water full of sugar syrup inside of this hive because there's enough room and I don't have any more of those in-hive uh, frame feeders. And so the bees don't drown in the water. I'm going to load it up with these marbles so they can lick the sugar off the marbles. So here's a little automatic water dish I've got set up. It's mostly for the chuckers, you can see here in their little pen. But also the bees are getting water out of it. You can see up here, there's the barrel of water supplying it. I just got a hose that comes down and feeds it. So only one queen hatched out. So only one queen actually hatched out and survived. That's because I put it in a small colony and they didn't have enough food to raise more than one. So I didn't have to worry about the queens fighting at all. So it is really unfortunate that, that one hive died. And it is sort of my fault because I didn't supply them enough food to keep them from wanting to go and attack other hives. Now that hive wasn't actually a wheat colony when the other bees robbed it out. But I think the problem was actually that there was a lot of open spaces. There was a lot of holes where bees could get in. So a few bees got in probably through the back entrance, took some honey out, flew back to the hive, and since the bees were already used to going and getting large amounts of nectar from a single source, they just converged on it and overwhelmed the population of bees that were actually living there. Cleaned them out of honey. The bees that are living in that hive now no longer had anything to eat and then died while we were off in Alaska. With the feeder inside the hive, the bees tend to treat it as if it was a frame of honey. They only use the honey as they need it as they're actually consuming it. With the feeders outside the hive, the bees actually, it gives them an incentive to want to get it before the other hives do, and so they swarm around it and they pull it back into the hive as fast as possible. And it's a really great way to feed the bees if you've only got a few hives around, because then the bees are more likely to take it very quickly and you don't have a chance of the sugar water spoiling. So this bee video is actually going out when I wanted to have a mine video go out. Unfortunately, that's not gonna happen because I ordered six standard size bearings and one of them which was ten thousandths of an inch oversized because as I was polishing up the crank I had anticipated taking off maybe ten thousandths of an inch of metal however by the time I got it completely round and all the scratches taken out of it I had ended up taking off thirty thousandths of an inch of metal you know the extra twenty thousandths of a gap is way too much I need closer to three thousandths of an inch so I had to order a thirty thousandths oversized bearing and that'll take another week to get in so I'm going to leave you guys off with some more footage of the bees landing at 240 frames per second. I know you guys really liked watching that the first time I showed it. I actually posted another video 
which is almost a half an hour of the high-speed footage in case you guys want to see it. I'll link that in the description. You'll notice if you do watch that that none of the bees come in with pollen on their legs. This is more evidence that there's absolutely no flowers for the bees to get nectar from, which is actually sort of unusual. Usually you see at least a few bees coming back with pollen this time of year. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.